Hey, this is Vernon Sankey, and I'm a board member of Atos SE, a very large French IT company, and I'm also an author of two books. And um, I do counseling uh, for CEOs and senior executives. If you're wanting to learn how to embrace change and navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast with my great friend, Dennis Gianuzzo. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey, welcome to the show, Leadership is Changing. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Leaders everywhere confront similar obstacles because people are people, but everywhere you go, leaders are overwhelmed, disrupted, and under pressure. They run from email to email, meeting to meeting. Many leaders are not changing quick enough, which means they run the risk of becoming irrelevant and being left behind. The purpose of the show is taking our listeners' leadership to another level by finding their balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. I believe we don't have enough effective leaders in the world today, and if we can get the leaders to step up and lead change, they can inspire real change. It is now time to adapt in our fast-moving world. Today, I have a guest here, uh, listeners, and his name is Vernon Sankey, and Vernon is based in the UK. And uh, Vernon has been on many boards and uh, organizations as a chairman, a director, and he's currently at ATOS, an IT company, and he's a director on that board there. Vernon, uh, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, great to have you here. Well, I'm delighted to be with you. Yeah, thank you. Hey, um, just, uh, Vernon, I've given a little bit of a brief, I've given a brief sort of a uh, introduction to you. How about you uh, give us a little bit more about you and, and what you do and a little bit more about your background? Okay. Well, I started life straight from university into a company called Reckitt and Coleman, which I think is relatively well known worldwide. And I ended up being the CEO of Reckitt and Coleman for seven years. And then I joined a number of different boards in different positions. Uh, many companies you'd know, Zurich, very big insurance company, Pearson, the owners of Financial Times, Addison, Wesley, Longman. I was on the board. I was chairman of Firmanish, which is one of the leading suppliers of fragrances in the world, Gala, various other companies such as Kofra, which is a very big European company. And I'm now and have been for some time on the board of Atos. Uh, Atos is a very significant European IT company. Mm -hmm. right in the middle of everything that's happening on on the IT side. So it's a very exciting place to be. I've been there about 12 years, chairman of the audit committee, and I work very, very closely with the chairman and the CEO. And I've been extremely happy with the very, very rapid and massive change that's taken place in that company. So uh, to me, it's a great delight to be there. It's Although people call it work, I don't call it work because I enjoy what I do so much. I'm also an author, so I've written two books. And as a result of those, I do a lot of counseling and help people to make changes in their life and to look at their own leadership style very differently. Uh, and I have, a, I have a coaching company, which I set up a few years back, which uh, also supports that. So essentially, my role is strategy, bringing people together and helping people to find really who they really are in their leadership style. Awesome. And I see the two books are uh, The Stairway um, to Happiness, and then also you've co-authored another one, I think, by the, well, by the looks of it, it's The Way, Finding Peace, um, the Way, Finding Peace in Turbulent Times. Is that right? That, that, that's absolutely right. And yep. the second one, The Way, Finding Peace, if, on page four we talk about a pandemic, and this was written way before. Wow, but it's no, but it's no accident because what's happening in the world, and what needs to be done to rectify it was was very obvious. I mean, the writing's been on the world on, on the wall for a very long time, and all we were doing was looking at the trends and saying, "Why is this happening? How can we change it? What do we need to do?" And it's quite radical, and obviously that affects the way what we are um, exposing in these two books 
a different style of leadership is is what we do ourselves. So that is how I behave in the corporations I'm associated with. Um, and that is, so what we say we should do is what we, we actually ourselves do. Yeah. And as a result, and, and we see the results. And so we, we really are, are judged by um, the results that we get. Amazing. And, and tell me, you know, with uh, with uh, organisations that you've been working with in the sense of boards and chairs and things like that, um, organisations, how do, how do they plan for something like these, this pandemic happening? Well, what, what do they do? Well, I, th- I think the answer is you can't plan. And, and um, I think one of the big issues that we have is we try to control everything. A human being likes to control everything, hates insecurity. Mm. Well, with COVID-19, all that's out of a window. You, you cannot plan. You cannot get security. And so this desire, this grasping at control, I must control everything, I must be in charge of everything, is actually a source of anxiety and stress and suffering. The way to actually see that is not that it's a problem, but it's actually an opportunity. I encourage people to be insecure. I encourage them to not be in control. Because when you realize that the world is transient and everything is passing and happening all the time, and you see that as something exciting and an opportunity for shifting and change, you say, great. So when people say, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do now? This is all happening to me. And we say, whoa, 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 that's opening up so many opportunities. It's great. All right. So it's the exact opposite of a normal condition. Most people want safety. They want security. And I say, no. Security is actually really detrimental to your ability to be flexible, your ability to react. What you want is to to welcome this change because change is permanent. It's always going to be there. And Mm. so this is an opportunity to realize the impermanence of life. And and if you take any Buddhist principles, you realize that not understanding that is the source of major suffering and anxiety. So the high levels of stress we see around us are because people are saying, oh, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know if I'm going to keep my job. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID-19. I don't know. And, and to them, this is, I can't grasp hold of my life. And I say to them, don't try, because that is the cause of your anxiety. Yes. View it as an opportunity. And then you'll find you're going to take much better decisions. Great. And then, you know, that's that's the exciting part from what you're sharing is that, yes, I mean, a lot of people who do have that anxiety and so forth, because as you say, they can't control it and they're trying to. However, on the other side, as you're saying, which is the exciting piece, is that there is lots of opportunities there. And so you're encouraging people to be insecure. I, I love that. I think that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, in our in our work, you see, I mean, obviously, I'm in a company on, on, in IT. So as soon as you're in IT, you are in massive change all the time. So so it is endemic to you. But what it's done is the COVID-19 implications has caused such disruption, but it's it's allowed people actually to open their minds a little bit mm. and to be a little bit more receptive because they're lost. So they're saying, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I am. And you say, well, tight. let's have a look at this thing differently. And they're much more willing to listen yes. because they don't know the answer. And I don't know the answers either. Of course not. However, I enjoy the fact that I don't know the answers because it gives us an opportunity to explore them openly. Yes. And that exploration allows you to actually see things differently. No. So one of the I mean a number of phrases phrases we use all the time is one is leadership shows up in the inspired actions of others. So for leaders to be true leaders, they need to inspire others. And the second is when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Nice. Yep. Which is linked to quantum quantum physics as we're saying, because when you look at a piece of an electron <laughs> or whatever, it actually shifts. It, it, is, it isn't what you're looking at. Yes. And that's the same. When you change your, percep- your perspective of something, you find that that thing itself has now shifted. And that's wonderful. That's just a beautiful way of looking at the world. Yeah, and I think you know that the, the beautiful thing you're just saying there is about being able to shift and shift your thinking, shift everything. And um, probably one thing I picked up from what you just said there as well. I mean, there's lots of things you just said, but I think <laughs> one thing is actually stopping, just stepping back a bit to think. And, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Creating time. Yeah. Cool, and and nice. that's one of a, that's one of the really important things. People keep saying to me, "I have no time. I have no time to meditate." You know. So I say, "You'll need about 20 minutes to meditate." I haven't got that. I said, well, in that case, you better have two hours to meditate. You're going to need more time. Yeah. Right? Because we can always create time. 
if we just look at what we're doing, charging about this way and the other, and panicking like crazy, we're using energy on stuff which is actually of no value. So we're either worried about the past, what did I do yesterday? How's it going? Or we're worried about the future, how's it going to go? You know, how's this interview going to go? And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's just been a moment. Yes. It's been a present moment. Nice. Be now. Enjoy what you're doing. And if you enjoy with enthusiasm everything you do, you're in the present moment. There is no stress. So you and I are chatting now. And what's missing? What's missing, Dennis? Nothing. Nothing's missing. Right? I don't need anything. I don't want anything. No. I'm actually, I'm thoroughly enjoying being with you. Yes. It's a wonderful place to be. And I don't need that. And that relaxation, that ability to actually not be stressed, allows you to then think clearly, think carefully, think about people, think compassionately, and think, what is it? How can we inspire people? How can we bring people together? How can we can get, get consensus? How can we do all the things at work? And we're not going to do it as leaders. We, there's no way, right? So many times people come to me and they say, what should I do? And I say, I have no idea. And they say, what do you mean? I said, well, I have no idea. Uh, why are you surprised? And they said, well, you've got all these titles. I said, they don't mean anything. <laughs> they don't, they're, just, they're just title, they're words, right? Yeah. And they say, oh, oh. And then I say to them, what do you think we should do? And then we say, well, maybe, maybe I should talk to George about this, or maybe, maybe Fred can help. Maybe we should get a meeting together. Maybe we should put a project. I say, hey, great. There you go. <laughs> great, great. You know, wonderful. Yeah. Is there any way I can help you? Yes, and, and, I, and I, I noticed it's a that totally people, different. It's a totally different conversation. Absolutely, and I was going to say that I, I, from what you're saying there. I mean, a lot of people I think come to to coaches, come to people, go to their leaders, wanting the answer. And um, the answer is normally lying within them. And um, Absolutely. So it's interesting. So, Vernon, I've got a question here for you, and that is, yeah. who is your favorite leader? Now, this person could be alive or from history, but who is your favorite leader and why? Well, I mean, there are lots, but I'm good. I'm, I, I've selected three. One is Marcus Aurelius. I mean, these, these are not necessarily going to be people you, you would automatically jump to, but Marcus Aurelius was one of a, one of a great the last of a great five Roman emperors. Mm -hmm. And he, his uh, meditations are all about uh, stoicism, what's called stoicism. But actually, he was a great reflector. He understood how people worked. He said, you only have power over yourself. You cannot control events. So exactly what we've been saying earlier. You, the only things you can control are your own thoughts, and your own understanding right now. If you try and control everything else, you're going to be making a terrible mistake. So focus on yourself and mm. make sure you control your own thoughts. So he also says that your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Uh -huh. In other words, if you, know, you need to be very reflective, understand who you really are as a person. And only then will you be able to understand what's happening. And he also said, remember that you live life in the present moment. Yeah. So a lot of this stuff is coming back, and we hear a number of people today talking about these things, and I say to them, that's interesting, because they go back many, many hundreds and thousands of years, and I could trace them back right back to the Vedanta theories of Hinduism. So there's nothing new in this. They understood this. So the second person, I, so Marcus Aurelius is just a, a, a wonderful man. I mean, he, he managed Rome at a time of great difficulty in an extraordinary way. And the Pax Romana, which is the peace of the Romans, he managed to maintain that in times of tremendous turbulence, much worse than we have today, much, much worse. Right? The second would be actually your, your prime minister. I think Jacinda Ardern is a wonderful person. I really do. I think of all the leaders around, she is great, and she understands all the things that, that we talk about. And in particular, I've, I've got a quote from her, which I really like. She says, I really rebel against this idea that politics has to be a place full of ego and where you're constantly focused on scoring hits against each other. Yes, we need a robust democracy, but you can be strong and you can be kind. And that, to me, is precisely what leadership is about. 
And I have great admiration for her. I, I listen to her, her, her podcasts in, you know, on the uh, Facebook and other things, and she is expressing through her behavior, through what she believes, she is inducing all the things that I think a leader in today's environment should have. Mm. So, you know, I am really pleased that you're, you're from New Zealand. I, I thought you were actually Australian originally, which was a terrible mistake, but Jacinda was the person I chose. And the third one is a chap called the Emperor Gao Tzu. Yeah, you've mm. probably never heard of him. Have you heard of Gao Tzu? Nope. He started the Han Dynasty. So he, he, the Han Dynasty went from 200 BCE to 200 CE, so 400 years of dynasty. During that time, the Chinese dynasty had the most successful, the most flourishing, the most wealthy, the least war times of all of China. So that's 400 years, and he started. He was a bit of a rascal in his youth, and he suddenly realized and took responsibility. And he followed the teachings of a person called Lao Tzu, uh-huh. uh, who wrote the Tao Te Ching, very much, a, very much a Zen Buddhist principles, and did a number of radical things. So he, he abolished all laws except three. He, um, and the three that he didn't abolish were, were for murder, robbery, and burglary. Other than that, he, re- he reduced taxes. He encouraged freedom of expression. He encouraged, encouraged meritocracy. He supported Confucianism, which is about respect for others, respect for family, respect for society. Um, and during his time, the, 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 this very difficult Chinese, the Chinese states prospered tremendously. And that, plus his following of the principles of Lao Tzu, which is very much what we expound in, in the way, finding peace in turbulent times, that, that is the same. The principles of Zen, which are based on very old principles, even going back to Egyptian times, are very sound. That's what we need. We yes. need them today. So when we say, you know, new leadership, to my mind, new leadership means, for goodness sake, uh, go back to understand the principles of leadership, mm. the principles of behavior. Who are you really? Nobody takes, they have no time. They say, oh, I don't know who I am. I haven't got time for that. And I say, well, then you haven't got time to be a leader. Right, right. Yeah. Hey, look, that's so great. Those are, those, are the, those are the three people. Marcus yes. is just in, but there are lots, there are lots of I'm wonderful sure people in the world. Yeah. No, great. Thank you for sharing that. And, and so, Vernon, yeah. um, I'm, I'm just uh, going to ask you another question here, which is leadership is changing. When I say that term, what, what does that mean for you? Well, I think it's intensifying rather than changing. Mm. Before, you could, you could get away with command and control. You could get away with being a good strategist. You could get away with just pushing profits and not having to think more widely. I, today, you, ca- you can't do that anymore. And in fact, you never could. It was just that the environment was sufficiently fluid and relaxed, but you could get away with it. Right. You can't get away with it. So really what leadership today, there are four aspects which, which I, I tend to focus on. First is self-awareness and EQ. The second is world awareness or, or cosmic awareness, but let's call it world awareness. The third is business awareness. And the fourth is, and the most important, is people awareness. On self-awareness, it is about understanding who we are at the deepest level. And um, until we do that, we, we, we really can't understand our, our own leadership style because until we've reflected on who we really are, who, what is our ego in all this? What is the role our ego plays? Can we observe that ego? Can we really reflect on ego and then start to control it? It's, it'll always be with us mm-hmm. and it's part of our makeup. But if you don't know that it exists and you don't know how it works, but then it'll catch you out every time right. because it's going to win. And so part of self-awareness and EQ is understanding who are we, finding your authenticity, understanding what honesty means. And, and you know, we, we can say I'm honest, I'm honest, but, but hold on. In your heart of hearts, you're a hypocrite. Right? In your heart of hearts, you're a hypocrite. And you need to know that. And I need to know that I'm a hypocrite. And when I know that I'm a hypocrite, because lots of things I would like to see happen, I would like to see myself being, but no, I'm not. But recognizing that means I'm going to be more humble. Uh I'm going to be more caring about other people. I'm going to be more compassionate about 
for other people and my relationships will get better. I'll be a nicer person to be with. And our self-awareness is about connection. Connection to truth, connection to other people, connection to the universe, connection yes. to nature, to nice. nature. And it's about creating trust. A leader cannot create trust if they don't have a high level of authenticity because right. people will see right through it. Yes. They'll just see right through it. So you can con yourself as much as you want. The fact is, if you're not authentic, people will say it's not authentic. And look at some of the leaders around today. You know, they're not authentic. And people are not going to follow them. They're just right. going to say, no, you know, I won't have any of that. You have to be able to do that. World awareness means understanding what's happening in the world, understanding the trends, understanding what's happening to the planet. And the, the reality is that the world that we have is a direct result of our own thinking. Sure. So everything that is happening around us, if we have polluted oceans, it's because we like disposable, cheap plastic. Mm -hmm. If we have beautiful skincare products, it's because we like palm oil, and palm oil grows best in tropical environments. Right. So we destroy the rainforest. Right? So the world that we have created all around us is a direct result of our own behaviors. Understanding that means that the way to reverse it is to understand how our own behavior has to then change. So some of that is starting to happen, but if we really understood that every single one of us is responsible for what's happening now. So it's all very well saying, you know, those poor seals are being drowned in plastic and uh, how awful that is, and we feel good because we feel, we, we feel compassionate about it. The fact is, what are we actually doing? Mm -hmm. right? What are we actually doing? And each one of us has a huge role. So world awareness is extremely important in order for us combined with a self-awareness to make the proper changes. Business awareness is obvious. You need to understand what's happening in the economy. You need to understand what's happening in, in, the, in the economic environment, the business environment. You need to have a certain acumen. You don't have to have it yourself, but you need to know where to find it. And that leads to creativity, listening, absolutely critical. You know, I have to say, I can't think of one decision, major decision, I've been involved in, where if I had done what I thought we should do first, I would yep. have got it right. Right. Not one. Right. Not one. So often I've come out and say, oh, I know what I'll do. And then I realize after talking to people, no way. Right. <laughs> so, so no way. And there isn't a single decision I can think of, a major decision, where it wasn't significantly adjusted by listening to other people. Right. So make the decision well, in just as you need, right? Yeah, well, and you have to listen to people. I mean, listen with the innocence of a child, not the conviction of the adult. Okay. And we tend to be, you know, we tend to be very con convinced about our own understanding. And then, of course, the most important element is the people side, people awareness, mm. being fair, communicating clearly, listening clearly. And we need to be shown to be fair. We need to be fair with people. We need to share the, the things that go well, but we also need to share the pain. Right. So Atos, yeah. for example, the senior people all reduced their salaries quite significantly to show, and we, 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 we forego, for, for went um, all the dividend this year, for example, mm -hmm. to show that this is, is, you know, we're not going to just keep going with our same things and everybody else is going to suffer. We, we're all in the same boat. We're all in this together. And that understanding is very important. And part of a people side is actually creating a purpose. People want to work for businesses nice. that are doing something, not just for shareholders and money. Of course, that's important. But I want to work for a company that means something, that understands life, that understands what's happening in the world and all those things we've said and wants to make significant changes. And quite frankly, no company is going to succeed in the future because it's a, it's a battle for talent yeah. unless they do those things because they won't want to come. And I don't blame them. Sure. If you're not offering good purposes, then why would anybody join you? Mm, that's great. Yeah, very good. So tremendous stuff that you're sharing here, Vernon. And, and listeners, I'm here with Vernon Sankey, who's sharing his thoughts and insights around uh, leadership is changing. So, so Vernon, here's a question for you, and it's how, how's your business or industry changed? Well, um, being in IT... That has exploded. I mean, there is an absolute revolution in IT, as, as everybody knows. And, and so uh, 
the Atos is right in the middle of all of that. So right. all the develop it's so it's a terribly exciting place to be. And and it's um it's just so exciting to understand and start to, to see the implications of that. So for example, we're into the Internet of Things, yeah. which means you can connect all kinds of different things together. There's edge computing, which is really like mini data centers associated and close linked to uh, the cloud systems. You've got artificial intelligence. You've got um, robotic process automation, right? so RBA, RPA. You've got virtual reality, augmented reality. We're very big in cybersecurity which is extremely important. So, so all of our, our clients need to be protected. And with COVID-19 and lots of people working from home, yeah. the cybersecurity risks are that much greater. Oh, sure. Um, and so I'm delighted to say that we have been right on top of that. We're very big on cloud computing, hybrid computing, and we also make our own computers. So our, our biggest computer, which is sold to companies that deal with masses of data, like meteorological companies, uh, will do a 1,000 trillion transactions a second. Wow. And on top of that, they are eco-friendly because in this one box, and most of the weight, so uh, this one box might be about six tons in weight. Most of the weight is to do air conditioning mm -hmm. to keep it cool, but it generates much less uh, CO2 than farms of of servers, which is the other way people do it. So they'd have farms and farms of servers that generate enormous amounts of heat and CO2 emissions, and, and ours doesn't. And so and there are various other technicalities about the um, our, our, our latest developments in, yes. in computery, which make them very eco-friendly. So, you know, whether we're talking about what we offer people in terms of their ability to compute inexpensively with vast numbers of people involved and some of the programs that are available to the public. So we do the NSNI in the UK, for example. And the website on that is absolutely superb. It's very, very quick. It gives consumers exactly what they want. It's accurate. It tells you if there's a timing thing. It shows you exactly how long it's going to take you. And, 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 and to, that, that is what it's about. It's about understanding the consumer and then adapting computery um, both software and hardware to enable that to happen. Yep. For us, relationships are very important connections. So we have a lot of relationships with very big other IT companies. And, and that is actually the future. It is about the agility and the ability to, to work with other, key, other people, with other corporations, and work jointly with them in order to provide combined solutions because no single company is going to be able to supply all of it itself and so for us one of the great things that we're we're, do, we're seeing now is our ability to link with a number of the top the top companies in the world that you, i'm not going to mention them you can know who they are they're they're very big and they want us and we want them and together we go to the clients and yep. that's been a great drive so i mean they, you know at the forefront of it you you have pretty well every single development that you can imagine. Yes. Some of it is terrifying <laughs> because obviously with every with it, with anything to do with IT, there's a capacity for destruction as well as creation. Yes. And and for us, obviously, it's very, very important that we are creative and that we protect people and protect ourselves and understand clearly what we're doing. But I, I don't I won't hide, but there are all kinds of risks associated with IT developments today. Yeah, and, you know, just listen to that. It's just change is happening, as you're saying, and then you're enabling that change by helping technology change to help everyone That's, else, absolutely. which is great. Hey, Vernon, if there was one thing uh, you could change in business today as a, le uh, as a leader today, what, what would that one thing be? Well, I would encourage all leaders to spend time understanding who they really are uh -huh. at the deepest level. So I'd ask somebody, who are you? Just tell me, who are you? And most people answer by saying, well, I'm George Franklin or something. And I said, no, that's your, that's your name. That's not who you are. And then they tell me what they do. I said, no, that's not who you are. That's what you do. Yes. And then they go on and on and on. And every time I will say to them, but that's not, that's not who you are. So the key question, and it's a very difficult question. And I have to say over several thousand people I've asked that question to, I haven't yet had a correct answer. Wow. Because it requires a lot of thought. It does. 
But I would ask leaders to do that because what it will do is it will stimulate their understanding of what they actually stand for. Why are they there? Why are you in this world? What, what is it all about? What's the end game? And many people, most people can't answer that. I also want to stimulate the right side of the brain, not just the left. You know, all our education, everything we've done is about left brain. It's about logic. It's about this follows this. It's very Newtonian. And actually, we're in the quantum physics age where it's not Newtonian anymore. It's very much more jumbled. Uh, but you won't understand that piece unless you can understand who you are at the deepest level. And what's the end game? So what's it about? So these two questions, who are you? What's it about? What's the end game? What are, we all, what are we all here for? And once you actually get down to that, and incidentally, obviously, that's what we, that's what we, we don't teach anything because we're not capable of teaching, but we, we guide people towards their reflection on this. And as a result of that, they find their inner peace. Yep. And from that inner peace, they make much, much better decisions. They're more comfortable in themselves. They're less stressed. Yes. They're nicer to be around. Awesome. Their families respond better to them. They are calmer. Yeah. And 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 they can be much more effective. Mm-hmm. It's not about rushing around. It's not about doing things all the time. It's actually about reflecting and then taking the decision that you need to. And most of the time, you don't take any at all. So in Lao Tzu, he says, the master does nothing but leaves nothing undone. Wow. Awesome. Now, when one understands that, one has understand one has understood what I'm talking about. <laughs> Very good. That, so, that it, that those are all the philosophies of Marcus Aurelius of Gao Tzu, and they are they are wonderful philosophies to follow. But they do take they are completely the opposite of all the education that we get. Right? Which is about you know targets and meeting yes. this and meeting that and all. Yeah. And I say, great, great, great. Yes, you need that, but I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. Listeners, who are you? Is what Vernon's <laughs> asking. Is who are you? The leaders. Who, who are, are you? you? Who are you really? Who are you really? Who and are it's you? It's not really? your name, and it's not your ego, and it's not your titles, and it's not your achievements. And yeah, who are you really? And the master does nothing, but the lead, uh, but the master leaves. But, well, the master does nothing, but leaves nothing undone. And, and when you think about that, you realize that everything gets done, but it gets done effortlessly without real effort. Why? Because we're in the flow, because we really understand what we're doing, because we've brought everybody on board with us, yep. because we're aligned and it's a joy, right? It's not stri- striving for something. It's not coercion. It's wow. I'm, re- I'm really enjoying this project. I'm enjoying delivering this stuff. It's effortless. Yes. And Wu Wei, Wu Wei is a philosophy of uh, Lao Tzu, which is effortless living. Yep. And that's what, it, what is meant by doing nothing but leaving nothing undone. Yes, beautiful. And, and it's effortless. effortless. I, I love that. I, I really do. And I think, you know, <laughs> as you're saying, when it's the right thing, when it's, 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 it's a joy to do, and then you can hear it from your voice as you're sharing that <laughs> about the joy about it as well, which is just brilliant to do. So, Vernon, what, what makes a leader successful today in this fast-paced, ever-changing world? I think what's required, the expectations of a leader today, are that they should be transparent. Yes. That they, which means it should be authentic. You have got to be true to yourself. If you're an introvert, be an introvert. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Don't try to be an extrovert. If you're an introvert, just be yourself. And actually, some of the best leaders I've met in business are introverts. But boy, the little touches they had and the little touches that were compatible with the authenticity of who they were made them really wonderful leaders. So you get leaders of every sort if they understood their own authenticity. Yes. They need to be honest, honest. And then, of course, you genuine compassion. And compassion doesn't mean I feel sorry for. Compassion means I appreciate the situation in which you're in. I have been in that situation myself. I know how you feel. I Excellent. don't feel sorry for you. I know how you feel. Compassion is not pity. Compassion is care. And then those things will then create a sense of inspiration. I want to work for this person, not because they're forcing me to, but because it's exciting, because I trust them, because 
They know who I am. They want, they want me to do well. They're there for my success. And their success really doesn't matter to them at all. And again, Lao Tzu says, when a leader has done his job, he disappears without any requirements. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need an accolade. He, he doesn't need recognition. He's, he, they have done it themselves. And they say, I did, we did this ourselves. And that's a wonderful thing. It is. So one of the other sayings we say is, is there's no limit to what can be achieved when it doesn't matter who gets the credit. Oh, wow. That is brilliant. Well, it's not all of these. I mean, none of these things are mine. All of these date back sure. sometimes thousands of years, but they are reflections of a truth. They're reflections of what makes a real difference. Yes. And I just hope that with COVID 19, people will realize that the, the future of, our, of humanity, the future of business, the future of everything is actually dependent on making radical changes in the way we think and the way we look at life. And that means actually going back to the work that the sages of the past did so well. They did it so well that so many people didn't want to listen to them. Yes. And actually, they understood it and they got it right. And when you, get it, when you follow that, you say, whoa, it completely transformed my life. But it seems so difficult because all our education system and all the things we encourage people from childhood onwards to do are the exact opposite of what's right. required. Right. And then you talk about the future now, uh, now. So here's just to wrap this all up beautifully with, with this last question. Where do you see leadership being in five years? I think what will happen is there'll be a recognition, and I think it's happening now, of the need for flexibility. Right. You cannot be rigid. So, so I, I'm a, and, I, and again, these are age-old philosophies. The tree, the tree that doesn't bend in the wind breaks. Yes. Right? We have to be flexible. You have to be agile. You have to be quick on your feet. You have to know how to gain alignment. And that's alignment within your corporation, but also with other corporations. You're going to have to work with others in order to create consensus. And actually, if you look at politics today, all the things I've said are totally relevant. Yeah. We will not be able to change society. We will not be able to change the world unless we find a way of creating consensus and encouraging the right kind of change. Mm-hmm. Which, which always has compassion and kindness with it, as Jacinda herself says. So, uh, so to me, at flexibility, agility, the creation of trust, instilling trust, gaining alignment, and obtaining and knowing how to obtain consensus. And, and those are the things that will make all the difference or not in the, in the next coming year, in the coming years. But yeah. rigidity will not work. Stubbornness will not work. You know, arrogance will not work uncaring behavior, selfishness, quite frankly, is so obvious nowadays and it's sickening to many people, to most people. Yes. Um, greed, greed is not acceptable. No. Um, and it's not, it becomes such a thing that, quite frankly, in our corporation, any, anything like that, we don't actually have to say anything, but people leave of their own accord. Right. Because it, it, it cannot coexist yep. with an organization that has, whose, whose values are totally different. Yes. Thank you. So, Vernon, um, uh, listeners, what we're hearing here is that you need to gain alignment and work with others and just be agile, quick on your feet, don't be rigid, be flexible and so forth. So, hey, Vernon, thank you for joining us on the uh, on today's show. If our listeners are wanting to get hold of you, where, where can they go? Um, well, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm mm-hmm. on Facebook and under Vernon Sankey in, in each case. Do, do, they can email me if they would like to. Yep. I have a website called improve, improvemyworld.com if they're interested. The books are on Amazon. You just put my name in and they'll come up. Yeah, cool. Um, so all of, all of those methods, if that's what you, if that's what you meant. Yeah, great. My email is vernonsankey at outlook.com. I'm very happy to, okay. to receive any, any email anytime. Yeah, and, and listeners, you'll see Vernon's name on the show here, so that's all good. So you better pick that up. So that's excellent. So Vernon, okay. thank you so much for joining us today. What we as leaders know to be true is that change is constant. Change is incredibly scary, especially with the unknown and the unfamiliar territory. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing. Hey, look out for the episodes as they're being released. and Download them, listen to them, put a review and a rating. Now, if there's any feedback you'd like to give me on the show or if there's a question you'd like me to ask my guests or if you want to ask me on my freestyle episode, which is called Ask Dennis, 
which happens once a week, feel free to send me an email, dennis at leadingchangepartners.com. Hey, listeners, there's one more thing I want to announce. Hey, just look out look out for the Leadership is Changing Facebook group. Go ahead and uh, look that up and join. Uh, that's now available as well. Listeners, thanks for tuning in today. We'll talk again soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.